Hi everyone, I thought I would do a little bit of an update on what I'm working on with my Zig 0.7.2 release. So that should hit pretty soon. I just want to do one round of testing on the major reason for performing this release, which is to re-enable NERVS. So Elixir NERVS is Elixir's IoT platform, and it lets you cross-compile your program and deploy it to IoT devices. For example, Raspberry Pi 3 and uh, Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pis in general, or Beagle Bone Black. I think they're two major um, supported platforms. So the previous version of Zig worked just, or the previous version of Ziggler worked just fine with that. Um, but I encountered a regression due to the way that uh, Zig handles libc in the uh, 0.7 branch or 0.7 series releases. So I have disabled libc by default. Um, so do note that if you're using libc for your Zig programs, you may need to en uh, enable that manually. And um, but uh, it should it should now compile and deploy to Raspberry Pi just as it did before except in the case where you need to use libc with Raspberry Pi. So that may still be an open, uh, a question for, uh, an open question for how to, how to solve that. Okay, um, so the other thing that I've gone ahead and uh, updated is how Ziggler uh, interfaces with yielding NIFs. So these are NIFs where it can, you can add, manually add yield points inside of your code where it will transfer control back to the Erlang scheduler and therefore be a good citizen of the um, of the Erlang VM. So normally you would uh, you would activate or label a function as intended to be used with this yielding functionality using this yielding keyword at the end of at the end of the NIF declaration, and you institute the breakpoints with this beam.yield function. Now, previously, the beam.yield function would uh, return an environment variable, which you could use to update the environment of the, of the, of the NIF. I've actually gone ahead and changed that now. Uh, and now the yielding NIF comes with its own environment. That environment will be stable uh, um, between re-entrances re of the function. And so beam.yield does not need to update that anymore. So I think this is a much cleaner uh, syntax for instituting a yielding point. And of course, you still need to have this catch in the case that the, uh, that the, that the um, yielding NIF is interrupted by the scheduler uh, due to its parent process being killed. So that's the first part. Beam.yield is much clearer and much, much more easy to use. And you don't have to have this awkward underscore equals. The other thing that I went ahead and changed, so oh, let's go ahead and like run this code and just take a look at what happens. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna enter this do a yield function, and then we're gonna relinquish control back to the scheduler at this point, and then the scheduler will come back in at this point and then return for and then finish the function and return the value. So it should look like this. And returns 47. Now, normally this would be inside of a while loop, but just to keep the this demonstration short and this example this example simple, I just kept it uh, like this. Now, the other feature that I've implemented is allowing you to use beam.yield and other types of functions. So, let me give you an example. So, here is a don't yield function, which I have labeled as threaded. Although I'm going to also go ahead and delete this in a moment, and we'll see that it also works for the synchronous. So what this is going to do is this don't yield function is going to go, uh, it's going to jump into don't yield. It's going to then call do a yield, which will bring you here. And then it's going to go into beam.yield, which will no op because it's threaded. And then it will return the expected value. So let's go ahead and run this. So you can see that do a yield still works and don't yield also works as expected. So this really takes advantage of the fact that in Zig, 
there's no function coloring. So you can use a function async mode, which is what's happening when you uh, call this using the yielding NIF. And uh, the same function, exact, in fact, the very same function, because I'm, in fact, just calling it from this other threaded uh, NIF, can be run in a non-async mode just fine. So that's, uh, that's like one of the major advantages of using Zig. Um, because it can handle both uh, async and non-async functions using the same um, using the same call calling conventions. Okay, so last thing is I just want to quickly demonstrate that this also works for a synchronized uh, synchronous function. So and there you go, but. I think primarily what you would want to use this for is in the case where you're uh, comparing between threaded, um, threaded and yielding functions, and you know, for example, you should write your you should if if possible you should write your NIF in such a way that it's yielding, and then go ahead and switch to threaded and then do some performance uh, characterizations to see the difference whether or not it's worth it one way or the other. Uh, if you recall, threaded has a has a bigger overhead because it has to spawn an OS thread. So in some situations, if you have like high throughput short running functions, you may want to not avoid using threaded. Um, but of course, you know in the yielding case, um, you're you're playing nice with the with the Erlang VM. So generally speaking, that's the that's the preferred case. Although it will spend less time in the um, in the function itself because it's uh, constantly giving um, its context up back to the scheduler. So yeah, that's a quick update on what's going on with Ziggler. I'll put a link um, in the uh, in the description below, and I'll be going back towards working on my uh, type specking or my Elixir static compile time static type checker um, in my next set of videos. All right, take care.